Thank you very much, Christiane. Pleasure. And also a pleasure to share this session with the other very distinguished speakers. Um, we, we have seen uh, uh, so far the approaches to um, the management of uh, what opportunities there, there are and uh, what interventions uh, might benefit patients with multimorbidity and how to shape them, how to conceive them. What I would like to uh, talk to you briefly uh, about is uh, reflect a bit of, on disease and care models and, and particularly as applied to multimorbidity. Introduce the notion of con uh, continuity of care, what the concepts and types, and uh, what's the evidence for the impact on health outcomes. How continuity of care can be expected or hypothesized it is, uh, to, to modify the association between multimorbidity and outcomes, present you with the evidence and conclude with some uh, uh, recommendations. So, um, this is an oversimplification, so if somebody is for rigor, please is, is invited to uh, leave the room now. Um, so basically, many, many years ago, in the origins of, of medicine, uh, if you want, or just simply, just uh, several decades ago, the focus was uh, uh, on um, specific problems. Perhaps, and uh, I'm using here the example of infectious disease. What I'm trying to demonstrate is that disease, how disease models influence the care models that we uh, uh, develop and apply to when providing care for patients. So under the infectious disease model, you tend to have, uh, tend to have one condition which was uh, caused by a single agent and typically would have one treatment. And that's, that lends itself very well for a uh, sequential model from diagnosis, treatment, and follow-up, and then off the patient go hopefully uh, cured with uh, and the, the top of the food chain was the disease specialist. Then we gradually moved to, uh, with the epidemiological transition to uh, uh, the recognition of the importance of chronic disease. And these are different types of conditions. You tend to have, yeah, you have one condition, but you have multiple agents and multiple treatments. And um, the, rec the, the health systems adapted uh, to, to that uh, by uh, using cy um, a cycle model, if you want, where diagnosis is made, and then there's a continuous cycle of treatment and monitoring to, to uh, check progress and readjust. And because the multiple agents and multiple treatments, the notion of the multidisciplinary trim uh, was uh, 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 increased in relevance. Now, the problem with multimorbidity, which I would argue is uh, uh, to some uh, uh, degree <laughs> uh, begs for a paradigm change in how we conceive uh, uh, medicine. Um, the problem we have is that we have multiple conditions, multiple agents, and multiple treatments. And we also need to come up with a, a, a specific approach to this, to this challenge. So, it's more about a, a, a system model where not uh, uh, that uh, uh, supersedes the previous one, where we recognize that there are trade-offs, that the goals cannot be just now maximize everything you can, because you cannot maximize all these many things simultaneously. Uh, some of them will be made at the cost of others. And the goals, and in order to be able to do those, uh, to make those, those uh, trade-offs, they need to be uh, explicit, and that begs for the identification of goals, which so far tended to be rather implicit. And also in the ways of operating, we increasingly need to develop more sophisticated w ways of working uh, across networks of uh, profession. So, wrong key, yeah. There is a gradient here, obviously, not just in the number of complexity of, of the situation. What you also can see here is that the, the, uh, as, we move, as we move to the right in the slide, there is an increase on the need for a whole patient uh, focus. And this whole patient focus, as, which is slightly different from a patient-centered focus, the whole patient is basically about putting together the different parts of the, uh, uh, of the patient that are being treated, treated separately by different uh, services and providers. And also an increasing gradient of patient-centeredness, which would focus on the values and the needs of those patients. From, but from an, uh, an individual perspective, I mean, from the uh, more psychological perspective, this integration responding to the needs of a person. Uh, 
And finally, this you can also see a gradient uh, in terms of, of efficiency versus relevance. Because here, if you want, perhaps uh, um, constraints about um, uh, patients' preferences and values. So it, whether whether you are uh, um, whether you are uh, uh, high income or low income, whether what's your religion, whether you're vegetarian, this site plays probably uh, 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 not a significant role. But as we come, uh, we we progress here to to the right based on the need for traits and goals, these things become increasingly relevant. So the focus is perhaps less one of uh, efficiency or effectiveness uh, and more of individual relevance. Um, how can we achieve a model by which uh, all these things are uh, uh, taken into consideration and appropriately addressed? Uh, for um, general practitioners and family physicians, uh, um, there is an obvious uh, uh, place to look for this thing, which is continuity of care. Continuity of care would uh, uh, be associated or would be uh, conceptualized as the uh, uh, continuous link between uh, a consistent link over time uh, between uh, uh, an individual and the healthcare system, one way or the other. Um, if we were discussing uh, this morning, uh, earlier this morning, whether we call this tomato or tomato, or so it's not significantly easier with related concepts of continuity of care, which has evolved itself uh, throughout history, but also with related concepts of coordination, integration, patient-centeredness, and case management. So, um, at present, let me give you with uh, three uh, uh, definitions, which may be helpful for focusing the discussion. As a medical heading term, it's defined as healthcare provided on a continuing basis from the initial contact following the patient through all phases of medical care. Um, another definition is coherent healthcare with a seamless transition over time between various providers in different settings. And one that I, uh, uh, I think it's uh, interesting also because of the tone it has is a continuous caring relationship, which is co of course may be related to the notion of care, but it also uh, um, suggests an individualized uh, approach, one in which the uh, individual as a person is taking into account. So it's basically this continuous relationship uh, of the individual with the healthcare system. And uh, to, of course, to make things a bit slightly more complicated uh, rather than easier, we have informational, management, and relational uh, continuity. Informational would be, associated, would be uh, um, the operationalization that has to do with, with the relevant information about the patient. So just making sure that everybody involved in care, taking care of the patient has access to all the information. Management means that everybody involved in taking care of that patient uh, that individual shares uh, a common plan uh, sh through standards and protocol. And relational uh, continuity focuses on the relationship between uh, a care provider, a healthcare professional, and the patient. So what is the, the uh, if you ask uh, uh, general practitioners, they, uh, family physicians, um, they will tell you how fundamental a continuity of care is for providing care in, 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 in our setting, in, in, in general practice. And uh, the, the, they, uh, they will t explain you there are plenty of benefits. From a research perspective, the evidence base is uh, rather weak. But what I, actually what I found rather surprising is that I was able to identify four randomized control trials that actually tried to improve, uh, 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 well, that, sorry, that allocated on a randomized way uh, uh, models by in which uh, continuity was ensured, and others where it was uh, diminished or simply not modified. And there's, of course, plenty of other uh, um, uh, observational data, which all of them, this body of work supports that uh, higher continuity of care is robustly associated with lower mortality, with fewer emergency department visits, with fewer hospitalizations, shorter length of stay, lower healthcare costs, and improved patient satisfaction. Short of a panacea, really. There is insufficient evidence for better quality of life, for better, con better condition-specific outcomes, and for uh, uh, perceptions of uh, higher perceived 
uh, quality of care. And there is an, uh, an emerging uh, positive association with uh, assessment of goals and uh, priorities. So where, in, uh, where um, uh, there's a very recent study suggesting that where there is a more continuous relationship, the likelihood is, is uh, uh, higher that uh, the pa patient goals and priorities will have been assessed. There, there are some downsides to continuity of care as well. There are some problems. So there is some evidence that it can, may increase uh, delays in diagnosis for cancer and rare diseases. Because one of the advantages of, 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 of uh, continuity of care in primary care in general practice is that is this knowledge of the patient. So new symptoms, things that do not quite, quite fit uh, uh, um, uh, different uh, patterns may be overlooked. And also there have been there's a commentary suggesting that uh, it's, it's, it's a ch it, it may challenge on occasions the provider-patient relationship because whether we like it or not, these are two people coming into uh, contact and uh, um, two people coming into contact may like or may they may dislike each other and uh, uh, they may just be stuck uh, with each other depending on the uh, arrangements of the healthcare system. So sometimes this pro continuity of care, de depending on how it is arranged, may uh, challenge the provider-patient relationship. What do we know in terms of what uh, improves continuity of care, this apparent panacea? Uh, in terms of uh, improve, sorry, I, would be, I should be more uh, careful with the words. What's been associated with improved continuity of care, with increased continuity of care? Older people tend to have increased continuity of care. Lower socioeconomic status tends to be associated with increased continuity of care. The presence of chronic, chronic conditions, very interestingly, lower multimorbidity. So patients, although the others would point uh, uh, in the direction of uh, people more in need of healthcare, receiving more continuous uh, uh, care, when it comes down to multimorbidity, the associations so far established tend to point that it goes the opposite. Uh, and also, uh, better mental health status is also associated with increased uh, continuity of care. Again, one of them that you would argue, I mean, should go in the other way, in terms of desirab desirability. In terms of the settings that, that are associated with increased continuity of care, urban settings, uh, the number of uh, uh, professionals, more health professionals, uh, um, sorry, uh, uh, this, uh, sorry, in the setting related are inverted, I'm realizing. Sorry, these are uh, challenges to continuity of care. Urban settings, more professionals, and increased access have been associated with reduced continuity of care. So, what can we expect from continuity of care and the impacts of it may have on multimorbidity and outcomes? So, Professionals recognize the importance, as I have mentioned, and uh, they will probably argue that makes decision make the decision-making process easier. They are aware of what, uh, what is the medication patients are receiving, what is the motivation for patients for uh, uh, making behavior change. Uh, they may be more able to present the required interventions in a, uh, uh, present them in the, in the appropriate way for simulating uptake. Um, patients, uh, uh, with multimorbidity have demonstrated in research uh, and empirically in qualitative research how much they actually value interpersonal continuity of care. And it also makes sense for them. They don't have to explain the whole story again. When people go to see the same person, they are better able to, the clinician is better able to appreciate changes in the health status or uh, 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 um, uh, that, that may be relevant uh, for making decisions. But the fact is that the evidence base for all this is very scarce. So the studies basically uh, that associate multimorbidity and continu continuity of care are basically four within three types. Um, and all of them are uh, uh, very uh, uh, sparse in numbers. So basically studies which were, have simultaneously uh, studied the impacts of either concept or both concepts continuity and, uh, and uh, multimorbidity on an outcome. Uh, as you can see here, for instance, that would be an example. And what you can 
C is uh, okay. In terms of uh, the effect of on continuity of care, it has uh, it's a prevent, prevent helps the prevention of uh, people landing in the emergency departments and morbidity burden increases it and morbidity burden as a measure as a, a, a very uh, as, a, as, a, as a proxy if you want for multimorbidity other types of studies uh, what have done is basically stratified so they've tried, tried to establish the relationship between multimorbidity and uh, uh, healthcare uh, relevant outcomes so here what you have is in light blue higher continuity of care and in uh, dark blue you have lower continuity of care and you have here for each of the four uh, variables uh, a certification by the number of conditions and the patterns are not I mean here for instance uh, low higher what you can see is how uh, uh, the risk of any of these undesired events increases with the number of conditions but whether uh, uh, continuity of care makes a difference or, no, or not across this strata doesn't seem uh, to give us a consistent message. There's constantly uh, 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 the sequence, uh, whether it's dark blue followed by light blue or light blue followed by dark blue, it's, uh, uh, th there is no consistent uh, pattern. Okay, thank you. Uh, so, um, the, the, last, uh, the last approach that has been taken is actually studies uh, which have uh, 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 experimentally tried to increase uh, um, continuity of care as part of more comprehensive packages. And uh, this is one, a study uh, led by Stuart, who uh, gave, uh, was, uh, gave the, was involved in the first uh, search. Has it ever run out of 20 minutes? Yeah. Okay. Um, okay, so there is some evidence that it can improve uh, uh, quality of life and other outcomes, but as part of a more comprehensive package. And here you can also see also re reduction in emergency visit and uh, unplanned, unplanned visits. So in summary, what we have seen is that continuity of care is associated with better health outcomes. That continuity of care tends to be inversely associated with multimorbidity. That there are strong theoretical arguments for uh, exploring the potential impact of improving continuity of care in people with multimorbidity, but there is sparse evidence. And that we actually need more uh, research on the longitudinal, uh, longitudinal research, uh, uh, more research on longi using longitudinal approaches to establish how increased continuity can help, sorry, can help us improve outcomes in people with multimorbidity. Um, because I don't have time. I'm not, I uh, cannot uh, uh, take you through these two slides. This is a paper by Martin Rowland, who will be also presenting later today, about how to improve continuity of care for people with multimorbidity, which basically focuses on engaging patients, reorganizing the systems, and uh, using uh, quality improvement uh, techniques, which focus on improving uh, uh, continuity of care. Um, Thanks very much for your attention and sorry for running over.